And welcome back from the weekend in episode 9, Tower of Hanoi. What is Tower of Hanoi? It is this guy. This guy right here. We can flip cameras over. So uh, for those of you that are just starting or just have no idea what I'm doing, we're converting this wooden prototype into a uh, storyline game. So what does that mean to you and me? This is the game. What's the resolution there? Like I'm looking at light coming in through that window sometimes is kind of glary. Bring this over. Okay. The idea that we're going to take is we're going to take this stack of rings. This is the gameplay. Because you can move one ring at a time to one of these towers. So it's Tower of Hanoi. It's Tower A, B, and C. And the idea is to move one ring at a time to a different tower and then stack them, but you can't stack a higher number ring on a lower number ring. And as you go, you can see how the, the sequence, you just start moving around, no, I can't, I don't want to really do that. Bring one back over here, then bring two over on top of three, then one over, then bring four out, and then work them back. So you see how that works. So as we started eight episodes ago, the plan was to get two rings working uh, fundamental gameplay and we've got that we got that all the way up through i think it was we did three last week so episode five we had a working prototype by the end of the first week where we take one ring put it on a different tower take a second ring bring it back and then we have a you know a, uh, feedback that you you've met the minimum number of moves uh, now speaking of minimum number of moves with two rings it's three moves with three rings, it's seven moves. With, I don't know what four is, five rings is 31. The formula is two to the nth minus one, where n equals the number of rings. So two times two is four minus one, three moves. With three rings, it's, there goes tower B. Three to the nth, so three times three is nine. Is that right? Three rings. No, two to the third. So two times two is four times two is eight minus one, seven rings. Three rings, seven moves minimum to win. So once we got this prototype, there's a couple of things that inherently um, limiting within storyline that we can't avoid. It's just part of the way the behavior is. One of, the, um, one of them is, and I'll show you here when we get to our storyline, get to the prototype. One of them is um, the snap back to starting position because it's a drag and drop. These are starting positions. So if you think of drag items and then invisible or transparent drop targets in whatever position. So if I were to move ring one to tower B and then ring two or tower C and ring two to tower B, and then let's say I wanted, I wanted to move it here, but for some reason I let go of the mouse or I dropped it somewhere before I got to my destination. Inherently, behavior in storyline is if you drop a drag item other than its intended target, it'll snap back to its starting position. And in this case, starting position is about right there. There's nothing we can do about that. We can't avoid that behavior. There's no, there's no triggers or anything that keeps us from doing that. Um, the other one is um, when you, you can't have... Now, we can convert it to a freeform interaction um, where we can prevent more than one drag item per drop target. So if I were to try to move this drag item into this drop target, then it would... The setting in the storyline would allow me to do that, but then where would this go? It would go back to its starting position. Well, I don't want to do that either. But I don't want to, you know, so you can see two, I don't know if you can I mean, visualize, but I'll show you when we get started. But essentially, it would look like that. You would see both drag items on the same drop target. We don't want to do that either. So there was a number of things with that initial approach. We got a prototype working, but all of those fail paths. What I mean is, how do you protect or prevent an invalid move? 
Well, we had to rethink the whole idea, scrap the whole original design, um, got on a late night Skype call with David Anderson over at Articulate, and he helped me kind of pick through some brainstorming ideas. Um, and we came up with one, or he had one and I had one, and we weren't, it was too late to really figure it out. So what I ended up doing is I started playing around with it the next day, and I'm excited to say we have a fantastic new prototype. Uh, problem is, we don't have, um, we still have some, there's, with, with a better structure, better format, we do have um, extra benefits, but we have extra limitations. So, let's flip over here and let's see if we can't get a... Um, Storyline screen up and running. I mean, it's already rough, but I just got to produce over there and move the camera down a little bit. How's that? How's it going? Hey, hey, what's going on, Michael? Was that Tracy? Hey, well, I've been over here at this other camera, so I wasn't sure who's joined. Oh, happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, right? <clears throat> okay. See the storyline we've got running. Now this is version 4. So this is where we kind of ended up last week. Now I'm going to do a quick preview and I'll demonstrate some of those inherent behaviors that I was just mentioning a minute ago. Well first off the gameplay, I mean the gameplay works. Now the blue drop targets and the variables and everything, that's just visually just to see. Because you have to hide and show drop targets. Um, essentially if you look at this first move or this first gameplay, Drop B5 and drop C5 are the only available drop targets for ring one to go. So ring one can only go one of two places, either tower B or tower C. So if I drag uh, ring one over here and try tower B, now notice another drag item or drop target becomes visible. And that means now that I have to accommodate three positions and two rings. So ring two could go to... B4, which is an invalid move, or it could go to C5, and ring one could go to C5, or ring one can go back to A4. So we have to we have to evaluate all of those, and as we as we add more rings, it's not really going to get any difficult because there's only three towers. So there's only we're only going to be dealing with at the maximum three rings and a maximum three potential positions. So if I'm ring take ring two now over, that gives me the ability to win the game. So minimum number of moves, three. We counted the moves. We got our gameplay counts. So prototype works, but does it? There are some inherent sort of problems. I'm not saying problems, but now if I wanted to take ring two and put it on top of ring one, now this is considered an invalid move, but it allows me to do that because it's a drop target. Well, that's fine, but then how do I, do I score that? Do I take another point off? And then you're asking the, you know, you're telling the user, I'm sorry, that's an invalid move. You have to move it now. So we move it back. I lose a stroke, if you, if you will, kind of like golf. You kind of hit it in the water, and I got to take a stroke, get it back out. Um, another one is, that was the other problem. Now, this is not converted to a free form. So if I converted this to a, a, a free form drag and drop interaction within storyline that gives me the access to the setting to only allow one drag item per drop target. Well, I have to go through all that and set all that up just to get that one setting. And even so, all it would do would snap, um, it would snap the, actually, let me show you what it does. Cause I, it's, it's, it's easier uh, to show you. Actually, it might take too long to do. So we're going to convert the free form. It's not going to mess with any of my triggers or anything. Um, however, one of the challenges uh, with something like this, because this is not a one-to-one -one relationship, what I mean is drag ring one doesn't necessarily have to go to this particular drop target. It can go to any. So it's called a min this is what we call a many-to-many. -many. So we have many drag items to multiple drop targets. So what we do is we don't assign any drop targets, but then our drop targets over here, we assign these over here. And put these in uh, sort of this column over here. And what that does is that tells Storyline to recognize these drag items and these drop targets. Like so. And we don't want any feedback because this is not uh, anything like that. And then if I go to this uh, 
settings, this is what I was talking about. Allow only one item in each drop target. That's great. Let's do that. Let's turn that on. And that's exactly, that's the only setting I want out of converting. So now if I preview, all my triggers are fine. All my evaluation with my variables, all that's not changed any. It's just using that one setting. So now I'm telling Storyline to only allow one drag item per drop target. So now if I try to put drag ring one on top of ring two here in Tower C, watch what happens. That works fine, but I don't want ring two to go, <laughs> go all the way back. Watch, even if I try to put two on top of one, one goes all the way back to its starting position, which is essentially now floating on top of the tower. So those are inherent behaviors of storyline. There's not much we can do. Um, we can, we can um, add a bunch of uh, extra variables and triggers. And one of the things with that snap back to starting position, what would be nice is if we had a trigger to um, sort of assign XY coordinates. So if, you know, kind of at a condition, if this, then put this object over here in this place, um, in this XY spot instead. You can't do that right now. But we can fake it out. We can fake storyline out. So this is a completely new approach, and we're using layers. So we've reduced our triggers, and we already reduced our variables from um, 15 to 5. And this is going to be our new layer stack. Um, what is going on here? Let me show you. We have two layers for win if it equals three, because there's only two towers. It can either be tower B or tower C. So if you win, meaning with two rings, Three moves is the minimum number of moves if you win on Tower B. If you win on Tower C, we're going to show this layer. Now, if you notice, we've got actual objects now on the layer. Same with you win, but it's greater than three moves. Remember we were talking about if you joined us last week, I don't necessarily want to penalize somebody because they didn't get it in three moves. I want to keep score and say, well, it took you five moves or six moves. But you still win. I mean, you still accomplish the task. So it's not a whether it's a win or lose kind of game. It's that you've completed the sequence. And we can fiddle with that and, you know, clean that up later, um, how we want to do that. Uh, and then there's an invalid move. And I'm not using that yet. And I'm not even, I'm not even thinking we're going to need it because of this new structure. But now on each one of these, we have, now the way my nomenclature is, and I've got a, uh, if you notice up here in the upper right, you notice that I have a, a label, if you will, R1, B5, R2, A5. What does that mean? <laughs> that means if ring one is coming from B5, B5 is that position, the bottom position. It's kind of like a chess move, right? So if ring one from B5 to R2, A5. Wait, how did I say that? R2, A5. Oh, no, no, sorry. <clears throat> um, that's a mask. This is our object. This is telling me where the two rings are positioned. So R1 is on B5 and R2 is on A5. R1 is on C5, R2 is on A5. So it's every combination where those two rings could be, not counting what you see on the uh, base layer. But you know what the cool advantage of this, the really coolness factor, is... It eliminates all those inherent behaviors. Now I've turned off my drop targets, so what's really cool is what? One, I'm going to go to, where am I at? I'm at layer ring one, B5. So ring one is on B5. And ring two is on A5. 
over here. But now these two objects are the only thing on the layer. Meaning I can't click on the lower, I can't click on the base layer. What does that mean? If I drop this thing anywhere, where's the starting position now? Aha! Ha ha! The starting position is on that layer right where it's at. It's not going to bounce back over here where we started from. Same with the ring two. Power of the layer. If I put ring two over here. Now what happens if I try to stack them? I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> Let me do this again. Here, let's try to stack two on top of one. Two goes back where it belongs. If I put one over to C, tower C, and then I try to put two on top, it's not. I don't have to worry about an invalid move because this new structure, this new approach, won't allow it to happen anyway. How cool is that? What if I try to drop something? Where it's not supposed to go. So everywhere, every layer, there's only two starting positions. So these objects are only going to go exactly where there's an available drop target, or you don't put it where you're supposed to, what's available, even though there's there's one right here at A5, there's not one on A4 right now. And it's all transparent. That just maximized the entire approach because everything works now. What are the limitations? What are some of the things we have to consider? Well, with the earlier design, uh, we were all on one base layer with a bunch of triggers, except for feedback layers. Uh, so if we wanted to change the graphic, update the graphic, we could up, update the game board. But our pieces uh, on that old, the, the old version, all I had to do was, and I made one uh, change uh, I mean, I was playing around. Uh, okay. There it is. Uh, I was trying, trying to get them to look like Lego bricks. When I did, I mean, so there we go. Easy swap. But with this approach, I'm going to have to go to every layer now and change every graphic of every ring. So there's a little bit of more, there's a little, well, there's a lot more management of assets and, and maintenance of assets when it comes to the number of objects and positioning because you don't want one ring on one layer to be a couple pixels off and not in the same exact XY position it was in the previous layer or previous position. So there's a lot more effort in maintaining and managing all the assets and if you want to change out the graphics uh, to some other style or vis visual, then you, you have to go to every one of these layers. Now, we only have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have seven, seven gameplay layers for two rings. I don't know what we're going to end up with, but it's going to be a lot more than seven. So it's just a lot more to change the graphics out. Because um, right now we don't have um, like a style sheet or anything kind of match where I can just go change and um, like a remember old flash days if you remember it's like um, um, a movie clip and inside a movie clip I can change graphics all around and wherever that movie clip is used anywhere in the flash program it would automatically update so that'd be kind of cool in storyline wouldn't it? it was just like make a make an object like a um, a dynamic object of some kind and then wherever I use that object I'm just I'm not adding more I'm just using one object and it's just duplicating the same object and then I can go into that object and just change that wouldn't that be cool that'd be great I would so love to do that uh, let's change this back okay so I'm excited and I think what I'm gonna do is add the third ring I don't know <laughs> Okay, hey, hey, Tracy, I, I'm looking at the, it's like nobody's commenting, so I wasn't sure. And where's my mouse? There it is. Um, hey, hey, Tracy, who, is, who else is with me? Oh, Kelly, hey, Kelly. Welcome back. Uh, hope nobody burned a, a retina hole, a hole in their retina yesterday. All right, I'm going to add a third ring. We're going to see where this takes us. <clears throat> See, we're just going to see what happens. Um, 
what time we got? We got about a half hour time together, or what, what I'm planning anyway. Um, but we're going to knock it out. We're going to add a third ring. So I need, this is going to change everything. All these layers I've already got. So let me think through this a minute. This is already working as, as two, so that's two rings. Let's go back here. Remember we talked about originally, we might give learners the ability to choose. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. Let's set this up. Put those back over there and get rid of this. <clears throat> I'm going to call this the uh, start. Uh, start. We're going to do that start. And this is going to be our two ring. Two rings. And then I'm going to duplicate this scene. And it's going to be three rings. Uh, you know what? I don't even have to. I can just <laughs> check this out. Just call it rings because then it's scene three, so it's three rings. Ah, I'll go that. I'll just do that. Just take the name out, ring. Just the scenes are rings. But it's two rings. That's cool. I'm excited about the smallest things. Okay, three rings. So now what we're going to do is we'll build a little branching sort of which game do you want to play, two ring, three ring, four. We'll build a little thing there at the starting point. And then depending on what the user wants to play, it'll take them to that scene, right? So we don't have to keep tearing apart one to build another because what's going to happen, um, we're, going to, we're going to end up messing this one up because we need to add a third ring. So by adding a third ring, uh, we've got to adjust everything. So here's our third ring. And now this ring needs to go below those two, but now I need to bring these two up. Now, that completely changes everything. Um, one, because I need more... Um, I need more drop targets, too. So these are all transparent at the moment. So I'm going to turn these back on. Okay, now... Um, this one was, this should be still, let's drop A5, A4, now I need a A3. And we're going to put this down here in the same, right about there. Call that A3. And now we need a B3. I'll, I'll just clean these up. I'll make sure these are... Um, it's going to be critical to make sure that these are all the good, the same exact positions. And I can tell some are not quite there yet. We'll clean that up here in a minute. And just get these... Get these in position. Okay, B3, C3. And C3. Now, um, if you remember, I don't know if you remember, but remember this one here. This was our mask to prevent... Um, you see, well, that's drag, drag. Where's my mask? Oh, yeah, it should be right there. 
So that's over the ring. So what that does is that prevents, let me do a quick, I'm not, all the layers are off right now, but I'll show you what I mean. Um, that prevents me from grabbing a lower ring out from underneath um, a higher ring, you know, like once a ring's been placed. So we're going to have to do that. We've, I did it and I didn't show you on the other with um, the other like the other layers where the ring one is on top of two. That's fine because in a two ring game plane, that's fine because as soon as you drop ring one on top of two, that's the win because there's only two rings. Well, in this game, now we have to consider when I've got ring one and two, say, sitting over on tower C, I'm going to have to put a mask over two because I don't want you to drag two out from underneath one. So there's just a little bit more we have to consider when we start adding more rings. Uh, but let's get these um, let's get these drop targets cleaned up here. Let's see, we've got uh, best way to do this just go into size and position, and we can position these. So A4 was at 50, 458. So let's make sure that's at 458. And that's at 458. And this needs to come up a bit. Maybe not that much. <laughs> uh, 410. Let's see, how high are these things? Uh, what are the heights? So it's 48. So 48. 506 and 48 is what? Fifty-four. Oh, and these are at fifty-eight. Five hundred six and forty-eight at fifty-four. So that should be at four fifty-four, shouldn't it? That don't look right. I'm not gonna mess with it. Because then I have to go back through all the all the layers and everything. I mean, it looks fine as long as there's a. I'm not settling. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Uh, I just want to make sure. So it's moving five hundred six to. F so it's moving what. Fifty two. It's moving fifty two pixels up. So fifty eight and fifty two and. Five zero. Five ten, yeah, or four ten. Sorry, we're going the other way. Yeah, four ten. So that's four ten, and that's four ten. Aha, four ten. That's fifty two. That's three sixty two. And that is those are good. Okay, so that's good. And again, these are going to be transparent, and all I'm looking for is a. Is general location. If you drop outside of that, then it's going to snap back to the starting position. So we're good. I think we're really good. Um, excellent. And Stephanie is in the house. Hi, Stephanie. Okay, where are we at? We got our extra drop target in there. So... Now, my, I'm going to start with the same layer right here. So it says ring 1 is in B5. R2 is not in A5. R2 is now in A4. And then R3 is going to be in... A five. All right. Yeah. Now to do this, just going to take a little bit of finessing. Let's see. I need to keep my size and position up. I think. I think I'm just going to keep that up and running right over here. You know, I wish I could resize this thing. It's, it sure takes up a lot of real estate for just a little bit of information. 
I need to get it up out of the way. Um, so ring two is at 124. Um, oh, you know what? You know what the easy way to do this? I'm trying to think. I'm just make. I'm just making sure. I've got a good workflow figured out. And I don't know that I do yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. If I bring ring three, instead of copying over, if I just bring ring three over, and I move ring, because ring two already, ring two has triggers associated to it. Both these triggers do um, in, in the layer. So I'm accommodating the next move that they make. So I don't want to start over by copying. I just need to move that up out of the way into this position, which is 124, 458. So we go 124, um, is that 458? There, and then now, I can bring ring three in. So this is uh, ring one. I was on B5. Ring two is on A5. And ring three is um, A4. No, A5. Ring two is now A4. That's going to get really long when I start getting five rings in here, a naming convention. Um, you know what I'm going to do? It was easy before. Now I got a method down. I'm just going to call it R1B5, um, R2A5, R3B5, that's easy to, can you read that? I can read that. That keeps it, um, It's just for me. I mean, it's just to keep me from getting lost. Because <laughs> this is going to get really, really... It's not It's not difficult. I mean, it's just busy work now. Um, I think it's just going to be busy work. Uh, but it's keeping track of your busy work because you can get lost real quick. Um, so let's get ring three set up. So let's see. We've got... Um, um, We've got a drop target over here. Drop C5. And we had a drop A4. Oh, that's right. We don't need that there. We need... Because that's if ring one, were, if you wanted to take ring one and put it back. Um, you can, Manually. If you want to do it manually, you could. Uh, it'll still snap back. Uh, but its starting position now is B5. But you could essentially move back up here. So this is now drop A3. So that's a potential drop target. One back to its uh, position. Um, another possible drag is two to one, but that's going to snap back because that's an invalid move. So we're not going to put a drop target there. And the other potential place is now in the same place, C5. So that's really the only two locations, potential drop locations to go. Now, ring one is position 10. Uh, if we remember correctly, we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're counting 1 to 15 left to right. So that's correct. Ring two no, now is in position 4, not 5. And ring three is in position five. Ring three is now position five. There. Uh, 
Change the state of drag ring two to hidden. Oh, these two. Um, that's right. We need to do um, one more of these. Let me explain. Let me just add this up real quick. Uh, drag one, drag ring three. Notice um, these are objects on the base layer. We need to hide. When we take that first move, Ring one, first ring one move. Doesn't matter if it goes tower B or tower C. That first move, and we don't have to do this for every layer, just this first potential move. One of two places, tower B or tower C. We need to hide the objects on the base layer. Otherwise, it's going to show through because we're showing the game board and some other you know, scoring. What's going to happen is you're going to see a duplicate. Those base rings are always going to sit there. So we just need to hide those. Um, and then af after that, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's what that's for. Um, we add one to moves when the user drops ring one on A3 or um, C5. That's correct, because we rename this. That's another thing, another t great tip for, for those of you who's not really working storyline a lot. When you change names in the... Um, in the timeline, your object names, and there's already a triggers associated with it. This this uh, drop target used to be called A4. And when I renamed it in the timeline, it automatically updated my trigger. That is cool. That's thinking for me. That's helping me out. Okay, next is um, where are we going to go if we drag show layer? This is a tough part now. So I'm on ring one. Show ring one on C5 and ring two is on A5. So where is that at? Ring one, C5, two on A5. Oh, that's this one is just if I were to take ring one and I just move it over. So if I just, the play, if I just move one ring one over, that's what this next layer is right here. And this would be uh, ring 1, C5, R2, A4. So it's essentially the same layer, except uh, ring 1 is moved over one position. So that's what this trigger says right there move it over to that layer and then we'll go to that layer and figure out those triggers and clean that up um, show layer r1a4 r2a5 so this is if we move it back which is not a4 anymore it's a3 so we need to go find that layer where is it at r1a4 r2a5 this is now r1 a3 R2 A4 and ring 3 is C, uh, A5 ring 3 A5 now we come back down here what essentially what this layer is is if we want to go back and sort of restack that starting position so all we need to do here is take ring three from here and put it up here after we move these two. Move these up here and put three in its position and then double check. We have a 124, 458. One twenty four four fifty eight, so that's good. Double check. One forty eight four ten. Oh, this would be the base. Uh, One forty eight four ten. Good, perfect. Okay, let's go back to this. Make sure we got all our. We're gonna get this first gameplay worked out. So we're going to hide the, the base rings, drag ring one. We go to those two layers, depending on its two positions. Where can ring two go? Ring two can only go really one place, and that is uh, um, C5. So that would be ring one, 
B5, R2, C5, that's right here. So we're going to put ring 1 over on B5, uh, ring 1 still at B5, ring 2 over on C5, and ring 3 is still sitting on A5. Uh, but now we need to go get our, um, yeah, we just get ring 3 and put it there. Ring one, two, okay. Now, what we need to do, that mask, if you remember, we need to add some masking because I don't want to be able to drag uh, ring three out from underneath um, ring two. So I need to add a mask here. What is this? Oh, that's my label up at the top. I'll get rid of that later. Um, actually, I need to... I think I, what did we do? <laughs> what did we do? What did I do? Uh, I'm going to change these out. And this is um, C5, A4, A5, that looks good. This B5, R1, B5, <clears throat> R2, C5, R3, F5, good. Okay. What, oh, we got this one up here. Let's get that one cleaned up, R1, A3. Uh, R2, A4, R3, A5. Good. Okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, well, we got to add the mask. Let's go back. Um, I need a mask. Um, so really all I need is one of these rectangles because it's already transparent. And now I just need to put it on top of um, put it on top of uh, ring three. And I, I don't really care its position. All I just all I'm doing is pre preventing the user from grabbing it. So this is mask ring three. Um, and I don't need any triggers. I don't need to hide or show it. I'm on this layer. I don't want you to touch ring three because that's an invalid move. So I don't have to worry about it. Because once you drag either ring one or ring two somewhere else, we're going to a different layer anyway. So that's kind of the beauty of that little that little thing there. I don't have to add any triggers. Um, R1, C5, um, R3, A5. What happened here? Oh, we didn't. Oh, we just moved it over one. I got to grab the... Uh, I gotta get that and ring three. Uh, okay, that goes here. This goes up. Ring three, because we're not in this layer. We're also we're prevent. We ring three is restricted right now. We're we're not there yet. We don't have access to ring three. We can't just pull it out from underneath. Um. And there, so that should be the first move, couple moves. Let's see if that works. And I know it's going to work. It's got to work. Okay, ring one. Before, uh, that's right. I gotta update these variables because I, I I remember I only did it on this layer. I need to go back. Now let's see. Is this a valid move? No. Can I get the ring three? No. Is two over on C? Yes. Is three? I can move three. I, I haven't done it on this layer. There's no place for three to go right now. 
Um, oh, and we don't. <laughs> we're, we're. I gotta fix that too, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, so everything's everything's good. Let's double check something. Uh, let's go this way. Uh, okay, so I haven't updated the second ring, so I can't grab these. Uh, let's see if we go up here. Yep. Can I go back? No. I, I, all right, so R1C5, um, R3A5. So when R1C5, when this is over here, we got a few more little things to fix up. R1C5. <clears throat> So let's go look at ring one. Oh, ring two. We didn't do anything with ring two. Show. Um, B5. So show R2B5. Do I not have an R2B5? Oh, here it is right here. Ah, so R2B5 would go here, another ring three over there. Let me grab. I only need the ring. I only need the ring right here because <clears throat> ring three can potentially be moved, um, even though there's no valid move for it. Let's get this cleaned up. So R1 is on uh, C5. R2 is on B5. And R3 is on A5. So R1, C5. So this is just kind of like they're in a row. One, two, three going right to left. And then R3, C5. Yes, yes, yes. So this, you know, this is about going back and forth and double checking. Um, when when ring two is dropped on C five, show R one B five R two C five. Yeah, let's should show that layer. Right, and then the um, these are the wind layer. I'm going to take these out for now. Um, not take them out. I'm just going to unassign them uh, because I don't want. I'm going to need that same sort of trigger, but I just don't need it right now. Um, so I want to kind of just unassign them for now. And then I can, it's easier to adjust these, just reassign them and then change the parameters than it is to, you know, kind of rebuild them from scratch. And I think there's only, oh, here, here's one. I'll turn this down. And where else are we at? We got one more right here. And I think that, yeah, that's it. Okay, now, we got, how much time we got? <laughs> uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. <laughs> it's like, this is like watching grass grow. Um, so let's double check this layer here. We're do, 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 four, ten, ten, four, and five, three, one, and three, two. Add move. If drag two goes to C five, add one. Add one if it goes to A three or C five. That's correct. Okay, so that layer looks pretty much done. This one we got to add a um, same trick. Uh, I'll have the same position, so I'll just grab this trigger because it's the same position. Ring three hasn't moved. Um, 
same thing here. So again, this is that um, the very first move, I don't care how many rings we're going to have, whether it's two, three, four, or five, ring one is always the first gameplay move, first move. And ring one can only go one of two places, tower B or tower C. And it's those two layers where we have these extra change the state of all those base layer rings to hidden. Because once we get in this stack of layers, we're just kind of looping. We're just kind of bouncing back. We're, ne we're never going back to the base layer. Once we get inside this sort of stack of layers, we're going to stay there the rest of the game. It's just that base layer is sort of that starting grid, if you will. Um, You know what, I was just thinking, instead of, instead of five different scenes with five different builds, what if we just build off the five ring game, the whole five ring game, build the whole thing out with all the layers, and then on one slide, right? Just like we're doing here. And then on the choice where it says how many rings you want to play, no, that wouldn't work. Because oh. I was thinking we just hide the rings. So if I want to do four rings, I just hide, you know, the fifth ring. But because they're stacked, they have to go, you have to go back down, right? Ah, that would have been, that would have been a lot more efficient. Because then we just build the whole game and then whatever rings are not displayed, you wouldn't go to those layers anyway because the, the objects are gone. But because of the way they're stacked, I can't take I can't take them out from the bottom and still have. That would have been fun. Okay, so <laughs> where are we at? Ring one. Uh, okay, so if ring one goes to a four, aha, no. A4, we have to change this drop tower. Well, it's, it's correct, but we got to change this drop A3. Now, that's A4. I just need another drop. We don't have a drop target here. Aha. That's what it is. Why do we have a drop target here? Anyway, we don't need it here anymore. I don't think, right? Ring two. No, we don't need that drop target there. Because it's already occupied, we just call this A3. We only need drop targets that are potentially a position to where it could, you know, potentially drag out and could go. So this goes back to our ring trigger here, and then that changed, right? So we changed the name. Um, and if, if you're all wondering what these extra numbers are next to these objects, that's just Storyline's way of um, adding a number every time you make a copy, and then you have to go in and rename it. Uh, so show layer R1, B5, R2, A5, no, R2, A4, R3, A5. Okay, that's correct. If dropped on B5, right? R1, B5, if dropped on B5. R1, A3, if dropped on A3. Uh, add 1, 2, drag 2, if it goes to B5, that's correct. Show R1, C5. R2, B5, R3, ooh, R3, C5? No, no, no. R3, A5. There we go. Um, R3, A5, R3, A5. Yep, there we go. A little bit more house cleaning there. Now, to seven, it takes seven moves to get three rings to win. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually add some more layers here once we figure out what the rest. So I've got two, with first two moves made, with three rings. So let's give it a try. There's two, three, and then I can move this here. And then now the next layer would be our three on B5, right? And then I need to take one and move it all the way back over to tower A5. And then take two on top of three and B4, and then bring one on top. So just a few more layers. I'll have this cleaned up. Um, pretty excited. Uh, all right, so what we're doing tomorrow, you're going you're gonna to get excited about this. Tomorrow is the Memphis Articulate User Group meeting. Um, and I move up, I move locations to um, the University of Memphis in the Instructional Design and Technologies Lab. And uh, we have that space where we do our uh, monthly meetings. And we're going to move this operation to that meeting. Let's see if it works. That's going to be fun. So... Uh, if you can join us tomorrow, we're going to have some, we're actually going to have folks in the room tomorrow, um, provided technology behaves. And then we're just going to pick up where we left off, and uh, I'll add, I'll just keep adding layers uh, the way we're going, and we'll go from there. So, thanks for enjoying, thanks for joining, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, see you tomorrow, and then I'll let you know what's going on with the rest of the week. Um, I'll set up some more, probably we'll go the rest of the week, no big deal. And... Uh, <clears throat> We'll get this thing figured. I think we can have this thing done by the end of the week. Um, 20 hours total. That's not bad. Even after scrapping and starting over, figuring it out. Um, get excited. All right. Thanks for joining. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.